meeting in a virtual meeting setting to ensure the health and safety of the public by limiting human contact that could spread the COVID-19 virus. This meeting may be viewed online, li excuse me, live online. In an effort to best facilitate dialogue and discussion during today's meeting, I'm going to ask that the board be mindful of muting their microphones when not speaking. I will call on board members to speak on each item one by one. I thank you all for your patience as we proceed with our meeting today. So roll call. Will staff note that the following individuals are present? Board member Carlson. Present. Board member, Sorry. great, thank you. No, no, that's perfect, that's fine. Board member Smeaton. Here. Excellent. Board member Younger <laughs> is actually not um, joining us this evening. Is that correct, Kanika or Marina? My name is Jay Das, correct. Um, board member Younger is out of town. Okay. Okay, just checking. Thank you. So, um, board member Younger, Younger will not be joining us this evening. Vice Chair Sai? Here. Great, thank you. And myself, I'm present, obviously. <laughs> Our council liaison, Mayor Mahmood, and planning manager, Kanika Kith, as well as staff interim associate planner, Marina. Marina, you're going to have to help me with your last name, Krustaleva? Yes, it's Krustaleva. Oh, you. excellent. Excellent, thank you. Um, they're also present. So we will now move on to the approval of the agenda. Um, board and staff, do you have any requests for additions or revisions to the agenda? If so, please raise your hand. Okay, seeing none, seeing a lot of heads shaking no. Excellent, so seeing no requests, I would like um, a vote for the board to proceed with the approval of the agenda as submitted. Would anybody like to make a motion to approve? Uh, I make a motion to approve. The agenda, excellent. Thank you, um, board member Smeaton. So we will now take roll call. Vice Chair Sai. Uh, yes, approved. Board member Younger. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> board member Smeaton. Yes. Board member Carlson. Yes. Okay, and myself, yes. So the next is the disclosure of the board of site visits and ex parte contact for items on today's agenda. Vice Chair Sai. I've not been to any of the sites recently or spoken to anyone. Okay, great. Projects. Board member Smeaton. Uh, that's ditto for me. Excellent. And board member Carlson. No, I have not. Okay, great. Excellent. And myself, I have not either. So we will now move into the um, public comments and suggestions. Um, were there any general public comments for this evening? Madam Chair, there, there is not any public comment. Okay, great, excellent. So in that case, we'll move into the public hearing. There are three public items on our agenda tonight. Our first item was continued from our March meeting. It is the sign permit for pavilions. Um, before we proceed, I ask that board member Smeaton please recuse himself. And once the item commences, I'll invite him back in to join us. And staff, could we have the report, please? Madam Chair, our contract planner, Lisa Krause is here with us and she'll play her presentation. And also to let you know the applicant is online with us and we'll bring him in to join if there's any questions from the board. Great, thank you. Can you see my screen? Lisa, we could see your screen, but we're seeing the presentation slide, not the actual presentation. Good evening. This presentation is a signed permit review for Pavilion Shopping Center located at 1213 Fair Oaks Avenue, project number 2343 SGN. Lisa, can you play the presentation again, but do a share screen and on the bottom left hand corner, click on share computer audio. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so you're not getting the audio. It's going in and out. So if you click on the bottom left hand corner to share the computer audio, then the sound will be better.
Yeah, I do not see the, the audio portion. In the lower left-hand corner, you don't see like two check boxes when you go share a screen. You have to stop the share screen. Okay, now try it again. Okay. In the bottom left-hand corner, there should be two check boxes and one of them is a, to share your computer audio. Yeah, I have it optimize and share sound. Okay, click on that share sound box. It's on yeah. again. Okay. Yeah, it was on, so we'll see. Okay. Try it again. Good evening. This presentation is a signed permit review for Pavilion Shopping Center located at 1213 Fair Oaks Avenue, project number 2343 SGN. At the last meeting, the board continued the item to allow staff time to discuss interpretation of the site ordinance with the city attorney's office. To recap from the previous hearings, there are a total of three new wall signs proposed on Fair Oaks Avenue, one new wall sign proposed on Monterey Avenue, and the existing monument sign includes a reface and repaint to match the building. This slide shows the location of all proposed wall signage and the monument sign at the corner. Staff met with the city attorney's office to determine what is meant by the term use and whether a Starbucks stand within the pavilion's market could be considered a separate use, thereby eliminating the Starbucks sign area from the total sign area calculation. It was determined that a different use could only apply to another tenant, such as one with its own structure and separate business entity, and not to a business product that is sold within or simply licensed by the market. In other words, a separate use criterion would not include banking, ATM, deli, juice bars, coffee kiosks, or similar businesses that function inside the main store. At the last hearing, the board also requested to see what the signage would look like at the reduced scale and under the 200 square foot limit. Above is showing the reduced sign size in comparison to what is proposed. In previous submittals, the applicant proposed a total sign area of 247.7 square feet. This was achieved by enclosing the limits of each wall sign using four lines. However, the city does permit calculating signage by enclosing the extreme limits of all framing and display within a single continuous perimeter composed of squares or rectangles with no more than eight lines. This measuring standard trims the unused portion and puts the total wall sign area within the 200 square foot maximum that's allowed. This shows the existing wall signs. The total area for this is just over 148 square feet. Staff considers the proposed plan an improvement to the existing in terms of its proportion to the building. This is the front elevation rendering shown from a pedestrian perspective. This slide shows the existing north side wall with the proposed secondary pavilions wall sign. The sign plan also includes refacing and repainting the metal portions of the existing monument sign. No additional design changes are proposed here. Initially, staff included all signage, both wall and monument, into the total sign area calculation. With the proposed wall signage now at 199.7 square feet, the existing legal non-conforming monument sign exceeds the 200 square foot maximum sign threshold with an area of 17.7 square feet. For consistency with other projects that were approved, staff is not including the legal non-conforming monument sign in the total sign area calculation. Staff recommends the DRB approve the sign plan subject to conditions. The DRB also has the option to approve with conditions added, continue the project to address comments discussed, or deny the project. This concludes staff's presentation. I'm available for questions. Thank you. Great, thank you, Lisa. Okay, so we will now move into the public comments and suggestion section. Um, excuse me, we will now turn into, we will now, excuse me, address the, um, the board and see if there are any questions for the staff first. So, uh, Vice Chair Sai, do you have any questions for the staff regarding the presentation? I have no questions. Okay, great. Thank you. Board Member Carlson, do you have any questions? Oh, sorry, you're muted. No questions. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, I also don't have any questions for the staff. It's pretty straightforward. 
So in that case, we will now move into the public portion. We will open the public hearing. Um, Steph, were there any public comments for this item? No, there was not. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and Kanika, I do recall you mentioned that the applicant is on the line. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, also there is no applicant presentation, but I'll go ahead and bring Paul Herman in to allow him to talk if there's any questions for him. Okay, great, excellent. Hello, Paul. Paul. Uh, good evening, I have nothing to add, thank you. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so in that case, if the applicant doesn't have any additional information to add, um, board members, we will ask questions to the applicant. Uh, board member, excuse me, Vice Chair Sai, do you have any questions for the applicant? No questions for me. Okay, great, thank you. Board member Carlson? No questions. Okay, great. Um, I think the only question that I have for the applicant is, um, are there any concerns with the conditions? I know that the staff is recommending approval of the proposed signage and the changes that have, been, have occurred over these um, couple months, but are there any concerns with conditions? Uh, no, thank you, Madam Chair. I don't have any concerns. Okay, great, excellent. Um, so then in that case, we will now move into, um, excuse me, we'll close the public hearing portion and we will have a discussion amongst ourselves. So I ask that board member Carlson and vice chair Sai unmute their microphones and um, we can just have a, seems like it'll be a relatively quick discussion about the proposal. Um, vice chair Sai, would you like to start? Um, it seems, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I, I think the proportions to the facade is um, appropriate and um, of the three, the, the three signs we're actually looking at right now. And so I have no issues approving it. Excellent. Board member Carlson. Yeah, I would also agree with the staff's recommendation to approve it as it is. It looks fine to me. And I have to say, I agree with that as well. So um, in that case, does anyone, would anybody <laughs> like to make a motion to um, approve the project? I'll make a motion to approve this Great. project. Great, thank you. So board, um, Vice Chair Sai has made a motion to approve the project. Uh, do I have a second? I will second. Great, excellent. So board member Carlson, that was a second. So, um, a motion was made by Vice Chair Sai and a second by Board Member Carlson. So we will take roll call. Vice Chair Sai? Yes. And Board Member Carlson? Yes. And then myself, yes, as well. So it passes by a vote of three to zero. This project is now approved subject to the conditions of approval. This decision is final unless an appeal is filed within 15 days from today. No construction or activity may commence during this period and appeal forms may be obtained from the city clerk's office. Um, so now I ask the board members to meet and please join us for the next item. And I'll be recused from this item. Okay. Excellent. So yes, we will now move on to item number two, which Vice Chair I will recuse herself. Excellent. Start sharing here. Okay, great. So, welcome back, um, Board Member Smeaton. We are now moving on to item number two. Uh, this is continued from our April meeting. This item is a demolition of an existing single story home for a new 3,467 square foot two story residence with an attached garage. Staff, could you please provide the report? Good evening. Before you tonight is a design review project for 822 Orange Grove Place, project number 2379 NID DRX. This was continued from the April 1st meeting to allow the applicant time to address the board and staff recommendations. To recap from the last meeting, this includes a notice of intent to demolish the existing single family home and detached garage, which was built in 1922, and a design review perm permit for a two story residence 
that would be 3,410 square feet. At the last DRB meeting on April 1st, the board made recommendations to the applicant. The list shown here summarizes the board and staff recommendations including to modify the front elevation so front entry is more prominent than the second floor, to reduce the second floor appearance above the front entrance, as well as incorporate flared roofing, reduce the size of front elevation roofing, reduce the roof pitch and plate height to be more consistent with the craftsman aesthetic, to extend the ease and emphasize raptor tails to reflect a more craftsman style and also reconsider the use of the corbels, to provide windows with appropriate size and variety, to improve garage overhang area, which had appeared out of sync, to reduce the appearance of the second floor from the sides and further articulate the west elevation near the garage, to reduce hardscaping in the front setback and add a traditional style entry door. This shows the previously proposed street view of the project in comparison with the neighboring properties and below is what now is being proposed. The street is predominantly single story, except for newer development, and the street appears to be one in transition toward two stories. As shown below, two future developments and one more recent development that are two stories. Shown here is the previous rendering of the front elevation. Generally speaking, one of the main issues last time was the overall scale and mass as it appears in relation to the neighboring properties. To reduce the oversized look, the applicant has added a more prominent porch element in an East Asian style, added additional flared roofing to the front and throughout. The second floor balcony and alcove to the garage below has been pushed back about three feet, so the front entryway is more of a focal point to the house. Also, the main roof size was reduced by approximately one foot and the second story den area was taken in from the side. Here's another look at the front, which shows the height of the structure. Plate heights are nine and a half on the first floor and nine feet on the second floor. The total roof height at now 25 feet, six inches from the previous, which was 26 feet, seven inches. This is the previous north elevation looking at the rear of the property. This is the rear elevation that's been revised showing a change to the window up top in the second story as well as the change to the roofing plan on the first floor. This is the rear view rendering of the proposed project. Shown here is the previous east elevation and below is the revised east elevation. As you can see, the top story windows have changed to create a little bit more variety, as well as some of the roofing has been flared. Shown here is the revised west side elevation down below. You'll notice the applicant has added flared roofing to this side as well. The porch is more prominent from the side and the garage alcove has been brought in. There's a new vertical window below and on the second story. The first floor roof now extends to the rear of the property, further articulating on the side wall. At the last meeting, it was recommended to extend the eaves and emphasize the rafter tails to reflect a more craftsman style and to reconsider the use of corbels. The applicant shows most eaves extend one foot nine inches and embellished with three inch by three inch decorative rafters to reflect the East Asian style they're going for. And as an example, one is shown here. With regards to the corbels, the applicant prefers this detail, noting that it is characteristic of the style that they are proposing. This is the previous site plan, which also shows the existing camphor tree in the front, which will be preserved, and the two tree removals towards the rear of the property. 
This is the revised site plan. Staff had recommended reducing hardscaping to the front setback area, and the applicant has modified this with reducing hardscaping from 44.6% to 42.3%. The applicant also shows um, the new porch as well as the modified garage alcove area. Shown here is the previous floor plan. The revised floor plan now shows a decreased den on the second floor, as well as a decreased alcove in the garage area. Board also recommended the applicant reduce the roof pitch to be more consistent with the Craftsman style aesthetic and the neighborhood. The applicant has modified slightly from the original 612 to a 412, 512, and 612 combination in order to generate the curved or flared roof. The overall height was brought down to 25 feet 6 inches from the original 26 feet 7 inches. This is the new planter and handrail details. This is the porch details. This is the proposed color and materials board to the left with the previous door to the right. The applicant is now proposing a slightly different entry door with gridded side lights. Staff recommends that the DRB approve the design review permit and notice of intent to demolish subject to the conditions of approval. As an alternative, the design review board may do the following. Approve as submitted without the design changes recommended by staff, or approve with modifications to the conditions, or continue the project for a future public hearing and direct the applicant to make changes to the project, or deny the project. This concludes staff's presentation. I'm available for questions. Great, thank you, Lisa. Um, we will now move into the questions for the staff. So board member Smeaton, do you have any questions for the staff? I, I do not have any questions for staff, no, thank you. Great, thank you. Board member Carlson, do you have any questions for the staff? Okay, he's shaking his head no. I sorry, I couldn't hear your- No, no. Okay. I have two monitors and sometimes I lose my mouse, so I can't get the mute button. Mute button. Sorry. No problem. No problem. Okay, great. Thank you. And I also do not have any questions for the staff. So in that case, we will move into the public hearing. Um, staff, were there any public comments for this item? Madam Chair, there's no public comments for this item. Um, there is a staff present, I mean, applicant presentation for this item. Okay, great. Would you like to um, receive that applicant presentation now? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I should have I should have mentioned that. Yeah, please uh, provide the applicant presentation. Okay. Thank you. I will share my screen next. The architect and the house owner of 822 Orange Grove Place. Today, this presentation will be focused on the design review board comments from April 1st meeting. The original idea of the house was from East Asian architecture, like China and Japan. For Chinese architecture, we pick the Southern region as our inspiration. Southern Chinese architecture was inspired by the black and white brush painting. It gave people simplicity and a peaceful feeling. 
This color pattern will be used throughout this house by incorporating white smooth stucco and a gray tile roof. About the cobalt, this element not only can be found in Western world, it is also used commonly in the East Asian architecture. In this slide, you can see many traditional Chinese buildings use the cobalt as their decorated Hi, this is Katie, the architect and the house owner of A22 Orange Grove Place. Today, this presentation will be focused on the design review board comments from April 1st meeting. The original idea of the house was from East Asian architecture, like China and Japan. For Chinese architecture, we picked the southern region as our inspiration. Southern Chinese architecture was inspired by the black and white brush painting. It gave people simplicity and a peaceful feeling. This color pattern will be used throughout this house by incorporating white smooth stucco and a gray tile roof. About the cobalt, this element not only can be found in Western world, it is also used commonly in the East Asian architecture. In this slide, you can see many traditional Chinese buildings use the cobalt as their decorated element, like here, here, and here. It's usually placed under the roof eave at the gable area. The great high of wind sky is also the element used in the East Asian architecture all the time. Here, you can see how it incorporates in the design of the building. About the Japanese architectural inspiration, we incorporate the rafter and the bracket system at the porch and the roof eave area. In order to generate the open rafter tail feeding like this, we have three by three decorated rafter placed under one by six ton at groove wood plank. Above the plank, we have two by eight rafter covered by fascia board to generate the thick roof eave feeding. At the porch area, we further incorporate the bracket system. to make this house more authentic. And of course, the wind scout can also be found in Ch Japanese architecture. Here is the example of the Kura house. We understand the missing is the key concern of the board. So we incorporate many design solutions in this revision. First, we reduce the roof slope from 6 to 12 to 4, 5, 6 to 12. By doing this, the overall height of the building can bring down up to one feet. Second, at the front porch, to shift the visual focal point from the second floor to the ground level. Third, reduce the length of the wall and the at the waist side to reduce the mason. Fourth, reduce the size of the dam to push it further back away from the front property line. Fifth, shift the dam location further east and reduce the size to ease the mason feeding at the east elevation. There are some efforts we put on this revision. This including, first, at the different window size to enhance the visual interesting. Second, curve the roof slope to make it feel more authentic. Finally, we add many elements like the printer, 
and the bracket system with traditional Asian inspiration details. This included our presentation for today. Thank you. Great, thank you for that. Um, staff, do we have the applicant on the line? I'm sure we do. Um, let me bring her in to answer any questions from the board. Great, thank you. He's on. Katie? Yes, hi, good evening. Hi, Katie, good evening. Um, so we'd like to give you the opportunity now if you'd like to add anything um, more. Um, basically, the, the presentation already expressed this package itself. Okay, great, perfect. Um, so then in that, that case, we will have the board members ask questions. Um, board member Smeaton, do you have any questions for the applicant? I, um, <clears throat> I just want to say, Katie, I think you did a, personally, I think you did a fine job of um, kind of taking our comments and reworking the design. I really think it's a lot better. It, it feels much more authentic to me. And um, I, 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 I don't really have any particular questions. I like your window layouts better. That entry piece is much more authentic and feels scaled properly. So um, I want to you know, personally commend you on your the job that you did, but I really don't have any any particular questions. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Um, board member Carlson, do you have any questions? No, I don't have any questions. Okay, great. I also do not have any questions, but I would like to share board member Smeaton's sentiment that I think it's a, a, a huge improvement and the massing looks great. It looks like it's it fits within the context better. The windows, um, the fenestration of the windows all look great as well. So thank you for that, for the improvement. Um, so in that case, we will now um, close the public hearing portion and we'll have a discussion amongst ourselves. It sounds like this might be a short discussion as well. So I see everybody's microphone is off. Um, board member Smeaton, do you want to kick us off? I, um, I mean, I'm really pretty darn happy with it. I think it's fine and I really do like that entry. And I think that was something that Joe pushed to, to really kind of rework that entry. And, and I really think it works. My, my suggestion to Katie would be make sure that the detailing is carried through from a contractor standpoint. I, I think the detailing is, is everything in a building like this of how the corbels look, how the, the tails, everything, how that looks. I also like and, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't recall the E detail being as detailed as it is now. I don't remember three by threes marching across there. Maybe they were and I missed that, but I, I think that's good. I think that does pull that E detail into traditional uh, Asian, yes, that right there, does pull it into the traditional uh, Asian architecture. So, I mean, it's an extrapolation of it, but still, I think it works and, um, so I'm very happy with that. And um, I really, I'm, I'm ready to move forward with this myself. That's it for me. Board member Carlson, do you have anything to add? Well, um, I guess I would just concur. I think the, the changes to the front elevation, even though it wasn't reduced in height that much, it feels proportionally much better. And I think that the increased mass of the entryway, uh, just a lot of little changes went a long way. So I, I think it looks a lot better. I have to agree with um, both board members' sentiments as well. I think that it's, as I mentioned previously, I think it's a great improvement. Um, I also like that the architectural style seems very consistent now. Previously, I felt like there was a little bit of a of a hybrid style going on, but now I think it's very consistent um, and it's just well articulated. So um, in that case, uh, I think we're probably ready to um, to make a motion to approve the project. Does, uh, um, does either one of you, would you like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve, yes. Great, thank you. So a motion was made by um, board member Carlson. Is there a second? I second. Excellent, thank you, board member Smeaton. So a motion was made 
by board member Carlson to approve the project as submitted. Um, and a second was um, made by board member Smeaton. We will now take roll call. So board member Smeaton. Yes. Board member Carlson. Yes. And myself, yes. So um, congratulations, Katie. Your project has passed by a vote of three to zero. This project is approved subject to the conditions of approval. This decision is final unless an appeal is filed within 15 days from today and no construction or activity may commence during this period. Appeal forms may be obtained from the city clerk's office. Okay, excellent. Thank you. So I will ask that um, board uh, vice chair Sai, please join us for the next item. Welcome back, Vice Chair Sai. Excellent. Um, so now moving on to item number three, we have a 3,023 square foot addition to an existing 2,540 square foot single family home. Staff report, please. Madam Chair, Carolina yes. is our contract planner for this project and she will um, share her presentation. Hi. Great. How are you? Good, how are you? Great. Um, okay, so you want me to show some? Yes, I have it um, up. Um, let me just share the screen. Um, sorry. No problem. Uh, if you like, I can share it. Okay, I have. Oh, I see the button. Sorry, share screen. I have it. And I'll can get I click my... on the audio sound on the lower left hand corner? Share computer sound. Yes, done it. Okay, and then Hanscom presentation, share. Uh, please install. Oh, um, geez, um, I'm, is it working? Can you see? Okay, good. Thank you. Um, I'm starting it now. Good evening. This presentation is for 2016 Hanscom Drive, project number 2389-DRX-HDP, an application for design review and hillside development permit for an addition to an existing single-family home. The project involves an application for the design review for a 3,023-square-foot addition to an existing 2,540-square-foot single-family home. The addition includes a 1,992 square foot single story addition and a new 1,032 square foot basement. The project also includes a hillside development permit to allow construction on a site with an average slope of 20% or greater. The project is categorically exempt under CEQA section 15301, class one existing facilities. This slide shows an aerial of the project site outlined in red. The proposed project is located on a 46,881 square foot lot and is located on a hillside through lot on Hanscom Drive. The property is surrounded by a mix of multi-level residential buildings. On the left, you can see the street view of the existing residential structure from the western side of the property. Due to the placement on the top of the hill and the large number of trees on the property, the residence is primarily screened from view. On the right, you can see the front of the house, which is a Spanish colonial revival bungalow. This is the site plan. The red shows the areas which will be demolished, and the blue areas indicates the proposed additions to the house. This is the view of the south elevation, which is the front of the home. The addition is single story. The project proposes to make the front entry more pronounced than it currently is. Also, skylights will be removed and new windows will be paired wood multi-light casement wood windows. The chimney will also be rebuilt. This is a view of the north elevation, the rear of the property. You can see at the bottom the proposed elevation with the new bedroom addition. The new roof will have the same slope as the existing, new terracotta attic vents are proposed, and new stucco will be used for the facade to match existing. Here we have the west elevation. The project proposes to have barrel clay terracotta tiles on the new and existing roof here we can also see the addition of the new terrace and pergola. This is the view of the existing and proposed east elevation. This is a three-dimensional view of the front of the proposed home. The colors and materials proposed are high quality and complement the existing structure. The roofing, which was changed in the 1950s, will be replaced with barrel clay terracotta tile. 
Shallow pitch gable roof forms will be maintained. Smooth and trowel stucco walls in classic white are proposed. Eaves will have shaped rafter tails and decorative glazed tile accents are proposed. This is the north bird's eye view. Here you can see the open wood and stucco pergola. Also, the project proposes paired wood multi-light casement wood windows and wood multi-light French doors. Here we have a model of the northeast view, which gives you a sense of the scale of the addition. This is the west-south 3D view of the project. This slide shows the proposed project in the context of the neighborhood. The property is located at the top of the hill and surrounded by trees. No trees are proposed to be removed. Staff has included the following conditions of approval. The applicant shall provide photographs of proper construction fencing and signs describing construction and noise disturbance information. The applicant shall also submit a final landscape plan to the Public Works Department. The Design Review Board has the following options. Approve as proposed without changes, approve with modifications to the conditions and or design, continue the project to a future public hearing, and direct the applicant to make changes to the project or deny the project. Staff recommends that the Design Review Board approve the project as proposed and issue design review approval and a hillside development permit subject to the conditions of approval for the property located at 2016 Hanscom Drive. This concludes staff presentation, and I am here to answer any questions, as is the architect for the project. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Carolina. Um, so we will now move on to questions for the staff. Vice Chair Sai, do you have any questions for the staff regarding this project? I have no questions. Great. Thank you. Board Member Carlson, do you have any questions for the staff? No, I don't, actually. Okay, great, thank you. And board member Sneehan. You, Mark, you're on mute. I do not either. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I also don't have any questions for the staff. So in that case, hearing that there are no questions for the staff, we will move to the public hearing portion. Um, staff, were there any public comments for this item? Madam Chair, there was not. Okay, great. Um, we have an applicant presentation for this item. Okay, great. Um, could you please play the applicant presentation? Sure. Thank you. Carolina, did you want me to play that? I, yeah, I don't think I have the latest okay. version. Sorry. No problem. Thank you board members and staff for your time tonight. As presented, we have a charming- Sorry, hold on. Thank you, board members and staff, for your time tonight. As presented, we have a charming project on a unique lot with unbelievable views. Such a pleasure to work on this project with my clients, despite it being a very challenging year. While it is unusual for the DRB to be hearing an HDP project, I'm so glad to present it to you tonight. I know you've had time to review the drawings, photos, and application package, so I will try not to repeat what staff has presented. Here is our project site in the center of the Google Earth image with our, with our 3D model of the new additions. The goals of the project are threefold. First, make much needed and long overdue repairs and renovations to the neglected structure. Bottom line, make it habitable. Secondly, create a livable family home with updated interiors. And finally, establish an entry sequence from the existing upper driveway to a new front door. In the next few slides, we have the existing photos, which tell the story of how we approached the project. This photo of the south elevation shows the 1929 original structure in the middle, with 1937 kitchen wing to the left and the 1958 bedroom wing addition to the right. When you're standing at the driveway, the first thing you see is the back of a stucco garden wall with no indication of how or where one is to walk. Where is the front door? This is the east bedroom wing, which was enlarged to the left of the light blue French doors. You can see the aluminum sliders with the tile sills from 1958. 
The north elevation, well, where to begin? The center is essentially the original building with the 1958 addition with aluminum sliding doors on the right, and the 1931 covered porch addition to the left, and in the background, the 1933 kitchen wing stepping down the hill. Even being generous, it's kind of a mess back here. The west wing, built in 1933 with kitchen and dining room and guest suite below, it's funny, we're not exactly sure where the original kitchen was. We're not touching this wing except for repairs, maintenance, and replacing all aluminum windows with new wood casements. I wanted to clearly highlight the new project from the original house, so added the outlines of the new work in red on the renderings you've seen before. Hopefully you can't quite tell where the new meets the old. The new additions respect the massing and hierarchy of the central structure with its high center ridge. All additions are secondary in scale, massing, and height. One and two highlight the bedroom wing additions that continue the asymmetrical, asymmetrical gable. Three is the great room with terrace and open pergola that steps back from the face of the existing building on the west. And four is a minor detail of relocating the stair to the existing lower guest suite, allowing for a safer and more generous transition. We're continuing the materials and vocabulary of what, was, what is there, breathing new life into this early 1930s casita while honoring the style. The materials are straightforward and appropriate. Creamy, smooth, hand trowel, stucco wall finish, wood casement windows, wood panel doors and French doors, clay tile roof, dark stained, heavy wood timber and eave details, wrought iron light fixtures and accents, and glazed ceramic tile accents. In summary, we designed a project that meets all five of the HDP findings as well as the four DRB findings. One, the project is appropriate for the city. Two, is consistent with the general plan. Three, is not, the use is not detrimental to the neighborhood. And four, the design is not detrimental to the neighborhood. And five, finally, the design of the additions and renovations are compatible and appropriate for the site and the existing house. Thank you for your time and so happy to answer any, any of your questions. Thanks. Great, thank you for that presentation. Um, staff, do we have the applicant on the line? Yes, we do. Um, the architect is on, let me, Susan, are you? I am here. Okay, the architect Susan is on the line with us. Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome, Susan. It's horrible listening to yourself on an answering machine. <laughs> the presentation. <Woo. laughs> Thanks for listening. Well, I have to say I thoroughly enjoyed that presentation. It was it was wonderful. So thank you. Oh, good. Good. Um, so in, at this point, do any of the board members have questions for the applicant? We'll start off with Vice Chair Sai. Um, I don't have any questions. Great, thank you. Board member Smeaton, do you have any questions? Hi, Susan. Hey, Mark. I, I wanted to uh, commend you on, I, I thought it was a, a heck of a set of drawings. Very nice, uh, very complete, um, exceptionally uh, well done in the design. It's a beautiful, I, I walk up there all the time because I don't live very far away. Farther than a thousand feet though. <laughs> I, I, uh, it's a great site and I think you have handled it really well trying, I mean, what a mess. The house has been bastardized several times and it, I'm very happy that somebody's taken that on to clean it all up. So I, I really can't say enough good about it. One question that I had and you may or may not have an answer for, I noticed that you're using a, uh, clay S tiles, um, mm -hmm. not, not barrel, like not, uh, you know, uh, S tiles are, I mean, they can look fine, but uh, it's probably the weight of a, a regular barrel tile is probably just too darn heavy. Is that correct? Yeah, that's exactly it. So the, the, okay. and, and there is some S tile that's still on the two outbuildings, the two okay. structures. And then I, I was really concerned about weight. So yes. 
but thank you for your generous comments. And I agree, it's a it's one hell of a sight. And it is. Real gem, yeah. And you did a fine job, very good. That's it for, for me, uh, Sam. Great, thank you, Mark. Um, Board Member Carlson, do you have any questions? Yeah, I have one question. You mentioned in your presentation ceramic tile accents, and I, I didn't see them in the rendering. Can you just kind of clarify? Is sure. that in the staircases or what, where is it? So. Yes, exactly. We were, I'm sorry if I, I hid them from you, um, but, okay. uh, but truly I was thinking of them as accents. So possibly a plaque by the front door at a doorbell. There's a, a, a fountain that is in the small courtyard pass through between the dining room and the bedroom addition. And I wanted to have that as something you look out from the, the dining room. And then uh, on the risers of, there's a few um, landings that we have to deal with. Gotcha, thank you. Great, thank you board member Carlson. Um, I do not have any questions. Um, I just also I'm gonna, I'm going to share Mark's sentiment that it's done really, really well. So it looks, it looks beautiful. I think it addresses the site um, and the, the context and it integrates with the existing house. I actually couldn't, when I first looked at the, the renderings, the 3D views and the elevations, I couldn't tell what was the addition and what wasn't. So very successful. Thank you very much. Thank you're you. Welcome. You're welcome. Um, so now um, we've had the app, the questions for the applicant. I will close the public hearing portion and we'll have a discussion amongst ourselves. Um, so if I'm gonna ask all the board members to just unmute themselves and we'll just can talk about the, the project. I think that this will be a pretty quick discussion. Uh, Vice Chair Sai, would you like to start us off? Um, I mean, I agree with what everyone's been saying I love the house, the design, it's really well done. Um, when I saw the drawings and the presentation, I was like, I was, I loved it. So I have nothing bad to say about it at all. So definitely on board to approve it. Great. Board member Smeaton, anything else to add? Um, can't get enough of those wood windows. I know how uh, <laughs> you just you just can't you just don't get that very often, and it's nice to see that embrace right off the front. To I mean, you know, it's more maintenance, obviously, to keep up with wood windows, but it I think that's really appropriate for this uh, Spanish colonial to to do that. So I really again I should have told Susan that, and I kind of forgot. Also, another thing I know she's still on the line too. Those renderings are. I love that watercolor. I, I don't know if she did that or or if it was some Photoshop thing, but it, I love that watercolor, uh, the renderings. It, it really keeps it warm and, and makes it feel comfortable. So I really, I'm ready to rock and roll on this myself. Board That's Carl, it for me. Anything else to add? Um, yeah, it's just a, a question and I'm gonna defer to the architects on the board, but when I look at the, uh, south elevation, uh, the cantilevered porch and staircase that's on the left side, it it feels like it's a, a little, I don't know, out of place. But again, uh, I have to defer to you guys that know more about this stuff than I do. It's just a scale thing that seems a bit out of place. Kanika, can we throw that up on the screen? There we go. Um, what, what across, are you talking about this black and white? It is, the, it is in that watercolor rendering that Mark was talking about, the, 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 the main view of the house. There's a- Let me a, pull up the presentation from the applicant. I think it was this one, right? Can you guys see this screen? Mm -hmm. The watercolor drawing here? No. No. Okay. Carolina, do you? Let me see if I can just share my screen instead. Do you know which one? Um, this one right here. Right here. You see it here? Yeah. Yes, that's the one. And, and again, I would just say, I would, you guys are the professionals at uh, 
this style of architecture. And if that seems consistent with what it would have been at the time, it's just that my first uneducated view was like, whoa, that looks like it's really cantilevered far out off the side, but. Isn't that, right. this is existing, it's, it's existing. Hmm. Carolina, is that? It looks like, because they're not touching that wing. That wing is staying, they're just doing kind so of- That's the original? Okay. Yeah, uh, I think they are, They're yeah. making improvements to it. So, yeah. and they also were gonna do initially some fill there, but instead of doing any fill, they're just going to do the cantilever over, like to support it more. They're just kind of supporting it. Then I think, disregard, I think it looks great. <laughs> We could bring, um, oh, I, Susan has her hand up. Can I bring her in? I think she would like to explain that. The architect? Yes. Um, chair? Yeah, please, that would be great. Okay. Hello, it's me again. Um, yes, that's all existing. We are, we have to repair that cantilevered balcony and the stair. And we are on that, um, over on that wing, I think we're just removing one or two aluminum windows. But the balcony and the and the small pergola is that's all existing. Mm-hmm. When you um Susan, when you mentioned that you were repairing it, I'm trying to hmm, I see a balcony here. I'm looking at the existing photos of it. Yes. So is it, um, I'm looking yeah. for the yeah, go, go to slide six, the next one. Yeah. You can see it on the, on the right yeah. side. It's the dark balcony. It's dark, it's okay. A little spooky to walk on it. So we have to um, probably reframe. And because we have so much work going on, we will probably have to go back into the existing uh, floor framing to recantilever it. Hmm. Okay. And you can just see it on the far left there. Mm -hmm. There's an arbor with an old bougainvillea. Uh, I must have had pictures at another part of the application. But anyway, regardless, that's all to remain. Okay. Yeah. Great, thanks. Joe, I think it's a good point. It's definitely a good point. There is a little bit of it. I, I noticed that too in the first, when I first looked at the rendering that I saw and I'm like, oh, it looks a little bit out of place, but I thought it might've been existing as well. So I'm glad, Susan, that you clarified. I appreciate that. Um, and I think in that case, just it is existing. So, and it's just gonna be repaired. Um, so I, I mean, I'm comfortable with, with the way the, that it is showing. I don't know how the other board yeah, members. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Um, are there any other comments? Sounds like there aren't any comments. Um, for me, it's pretty much a slam dunk. I think that this project is beautiful. It's great. So um, in that case, I'm going to ask if uh, anybody would like to make a motion to approve the project as submitted. I'll make a motion to approve the project. Great. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, so a motion was made to approve the project as submitted by Vice Chair Sai and a second by Board Member Smeaton. We will now take roll call. Vice Chair Sai? Yes. Board Member Carlson? Yes. And Board Member Smeaton? Aye. Excellent. Myself? Yes. So um, congratulations, Susan. Your project has passed by a vote of four to zero. This project is approved subject to the conditions of approval. This decision is final unless an appeal is filed within 15 days from today. No construction or activity may commence during this period and appeal forms may be obtained from the city clerk's office. Congratulations. Excellent, so that um, closes the, the items, the public items on our agenda for this evening. We will now move into the consent calendar um, I see that there is nothing on the consent calendar, so we will then move into the discussion items. And I also see that there is nothing under the discussion items, so we will move to um, administration. Um, 
Comments from the city council liaison, Mayor Mahmood. I have to say, this is quite the education for me. My vocabulary is being expanded. Um, but also, I so appreciate all of your comments. My God, the difference in the before and after photos for the, um, the Orange Grove Place home. What a difference, just um, amazing. Uh, you are truly performing such a valued service, not only to the neighbors, but also to the applicant herself, who will, um, as a result of your good comments, now have something that is not only a lot more pleasing to the eye, but I think a much better investment of funds. So thank you all for all of your good input. It's, um, it's, it's very impressive. The only other thing I will add is that uh, our new city manager, uh, Armine Shaparian, uh, will start on Memorial Day, May 31. So she's going to be, you know, since that is a legal holiday, she will be on call. Um, our current city manager, Sean Joy, said if any more water mains break, God forbid, she would be the one to respond to them. But uh, her first day at work will be the following day, which will be June 1st. So I am hoping that she will make, a, to, I am going to recommend to her that she um, make an effort to attend each one of our 15 commissioning committee wow. <laughs> meetings. And so I can't promise when she will get to you, but I do earnestly hope that she will get to you soon. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mayor. That's exciting. Um, so we will now hear comments from our board members. Would anyone like to go first? I see nobody raising their hand, so I'm guessing there are no comments. Any comments? Nope. Nope. Nope, there's no comments from myself either. So in that case, we will move on. Oh, excuse me, are there any um, subcommittee comments? I don't believe the ADU subcommittee, we've, we discussed this at the previous meeting. And I think actually the previous meeting before that we had discussed the ADU ordinance. There's no updates on that. Um, and I don't think there's any other subcommittee comments. So in that case, if I'm wrong, please, please raise your hand now. Nope. Okay, excellent. So then we will now move on to comments from the staff. Staff, are there any comments? Yeah, I just want to let the board know that last night city council um, adopted the inclusionary housing ordinance and also the ADU ordinance. Um, the inclusionary housing has been effective because an urgency ordinance was adopted at the prior meeting. The ADU ordinance will be effective 30 days from today or yesterday. Today. <laughs> It was adopted last night. So, um, so in 30 days, we'll be um, using the new ADU ordinance. Um, and we are working on phase two of the ADU ordinance for historic properties for, to develop objective design standards as well as guidelines. And we anticipate to have that available for public review sometime in June. So um, we may be reaching out to our ADU subcommittee here just to talk about design a little bit further too once we get um, some more revised changes for our standard for design standard. Um, also, I want to let you know that um, Marina is substituting for Melinda while she's on maternity leave. Um, and Marina, did you want to say something to our board? It's just an honor for me to be able to help the city where I live. Uh, I'm an architectural historian and preservation consultant by training and by my professional experience. I used to work for the city of Pasadena for a while. Uh, in in the same position. So yes, very glad to be with you. Great, welcome. And Thank to you. let you know, I'm actually very happy to have Marina on because I'm also sad to announce that um, Anneli Gonzalez has left us today. So, and we do have an open position for assistant planner that's open. So we'll be reviewing application next week. But right now, um, Melinda, I mean, Marina, I'm sorry. Her name is too close to Melinda, <laughs> is um, helping us tremendously and she's still learning a lot of the project, but she's picking up very quick. So we'll do the best we can to keep projects moving and 
answering public inquiries moving forward while we're hiring someone else for help. Great, excellent, thank you. Um, so are there any more staff comments? Mm, no. no. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. So thank you staff. Uh, we will now move to adjourn the meeting. Before we adjourn, I would like to remind everyone that the next regular design review board meeting is scheduled for Thursday, June 3rd at 6.30 p.m. The time is now 7.36 p.m. and the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, that was a quick one. <laughs>